Hello and welcome back. I am Seth Juarez. I'm here with Justin Feinberg, founder and CEO of Cassidy AI, building AI tools for the masses. How you doing, bud? I'm, I'm great, Seth. It's great to be here at Microsoft Bill. Yeah, exciting. we got to sit here and just chat, and I'm like, don't use it up. This is all good stuff. It's too much good stuff. Yeah, too much good stuff. Yeah. So tell us about Cassidy AI and what you do. Yeah, man. Well, I'll tell you, I'll give you background. So basically my background uh, building in this Oh, space. I'm sorry. Before you go, live questions. Please get your questions in the question box. Get that started. We want to get it. Because otherwise, I will hog all of his time. He's an awesome dude. So please make sure you get a question. So, so Cassidy, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, man. So basically, my, my introduction to AI basically started when GPT-3 came out. So yeah. I had my sort of chat GPT moment a couple of years prior to sort yeah, of this mass right before. interest. Um, and, you know, immediately started making content in the AI space, just talking about how we were using AI, building products, things like that. And when ChatGPT came out, there was just an explosion, yeah. obviously, this mass appeal of interest in this space. Um, and so off the back of that, you know, we started Cassidy really with the idea of how can we bring more power to non-technical people who are excited about AI, don't know much about AI generally, um, and, and allow them to build these AI workflows that are really unique to their business. That's what we started Cassidy on, and it's been really awesome. So what was it like, because like, GPT-3, like I, I heard rumblings about it, yeah. but you got into that right away, and my sense is that you were like, whoa, what is this? But you had that wow moment beforehand. Can you tell us what that experience was like and why people should be really super excited about this tech? Well, it, it was just as mind-blowing then as it is now. Yeah, of course. You know, in a very uh, smaller way at the time, but we immediately just started kind of using it in the products that we were building, my co-founder and I. Um, but it wasn't until really ChatGPT came out, that product shift where it was in that chat experience that everybody in the world was like, okay, holy, wow, this, yeah. is, this is amazing. Um, and, and that was just really the impetus to just start this company, was like, all right, how do we make it, how do we give more power to these non-technical users who are excited about this technology? Uh, because really there's never been a technology shift that gotten the mass excitement like AI has. I it's know. It's so unique. And it's been, it's been different because as I've seen it, and maybe, maybe you can validate this or yeah. maybe say, hey, Seth, you're up a creek. It was the first time that it wasn't tech companies saying, you should do this. It was the masses saying, we want this. And it was, to it, it, we haven't had that kind of reversal since, I don't know, the iPhone. Totally. I mean, it's such a unique time for developers, whether whatever product you're building, if you're building a construction CRM for a construction work, whatever it is, you can now add AI into your product and really just delight users in a way that's like never really been possible with any other technology shift. And I think that's what's so excited about this new movement towards like, how do you actually build AI products? Um, and I've been really excited about that. That's cool. So the digital questions are coming in, keep them coming. So we have a digital question. Who's, who's giving that to us? We have a question from Randy in the chat, okay. and he's asking Justin, how can Cassidy AI enhance collaboration and productivity within a team that includes both technical and non-technical members? Oh, so how can Cassidy AI help productivity yeah. with a team that's both technical and non-technical? So our goal with Cassidy is really to give the full power of AI that an engineer might have who's completely technical, build anything, but have the usability that someone who doesn't even know what an API is could really build this complex workflow that's really unique to them. And so, you know, what Cassidy enables is someone like a sales development representative or a marketing associate to really look at what are their workflows, what do they do on a daily basis, and then actually put AI to the test. How can you build, connect all of your tools together, bring in your data, and replicate those exact workflows that you as an employee are doing. Uh, and that was really only possible before if you knew how to code, if you could put things together, uh, you could build something yourself. And that's really what Cassidy enables is just that totally non-technical user can really build powerful software uh, yeah. with, without the knowledge. I love how, first of all, LLMs are enhancing productivity, but now you're going the extra step of enhancing the productivity of someone who maybe is not used to technology as yeah. well. So it looks like we have an in-person question over here. Yes, sir. Thanks, Seth. Thanks, Justin. I'm loving your guys' passion. My question is, given the fact that just two years ago, you didn't have access to this, how are you preparing your clients and yourself for the continued change, the pace of innovation that's just blistering? So the question is great. How are, we how are we preparing folks for the continued change? Look, I think the way that I think about this, and I, I mean, you know, you saw it firsthand when we were all at the keynote the other day, Sam Altman came out and he said, you can now add intelligence to your product. And I sat there and I thought, I go, I don't really know what that means. Yeah. And I don't think anyone really knows what that means at this One point. More, and and I think that the key takeaway there is that there really aren't any experts. The playbook hasn't been written. And so my advice to, to clients, to developers, 
is to approach AI with this level of just curiosity and experimentation, knowing that, hey, we all don't really know what the future holds. We don't know what the mo next model looks like. And so if you go into it with just this experimentation, this curiosity, this willingness to just act like a startup, move fast, I think that's how you prepare yourself in sort of the AI generation, whether you're building products or just looking to enhance productivity internally. Um, that's the way that I recommend. And I, and I love it that because like, we don't know what the future looks like, so everyone here that's watching and in person, they get to make the future what they want with this. Looks like we have another question coming up. What's up from yes. Digital Audience? Okay, this one's from Kate online. Kate is asking, what are the biggest mistakes you see companies make when they begin their AI journey? Ooh, what are some of the biggest mistakes company, companies, it's from Kate, that they make when they start their AI journey? You know, I think that the, the mistake that companies are, are, are making in a, in a lot of ways are like, they're so focused on adding AI for AI's sake that yes. they're not as focused on actually solving real problems. And I think that that's one thing here that there's, there's obviously a lot of interest, there's a lot of push to jump in and use it, but ultimately AI is a solution to a problem and I think it's important yeah. to remember that no matter you're building products, you're trying to solve internal productivity gains, whatever it is, start with the problem and then move back to the solution. And in a lot of cases, that solution will be AI. Um, but that's the way I would think about it. And, and you know what, like I, I have, have the privilege sometimes of giving talks at different places around the world. And I always ask, how many of you have had your managers say, you need to put AI in your product? And almost every one of them raised their hand. And people are having a hard time because it's, there's like this inversion of like, well, let's find a problem first and then see how AI can solve it. Yeah. Do you have any tips for how people can do that? To figure like, out, yeah. Yeah, is there like a, like a rule of thumb or some principles of like, yeah, that's an AI thing that you could do? I mean, I, I think it's, it goes back to what I said, which is just like this experimentation. I think there's a lot of low hanging fruit. Yeah. I mean, when you dive in and you use something like ChatGPT or you use any AI product, you know, just look at those use cases that are very clear and evident on the surface. Don't try to automate all of your work, automate your company. Yeah. I think there's, there's a lot of false promises out there. There's a lot of flashy demos out there. Uh, but really starting with kind of first principles, what are the things that directly this thing can solve? Um, and, and that's the way I would approach it, is, is focus on that low hanging fruit initially, and then, and then expand from there. I love it. All right, looks like we have a question from the digital audience. What do we got? Yes. Okay, a little bit more about Cassidy. So from Susan in the chat, she is asking, is there any training course that is provided to learn how to use Cassidy for a non-tech savvy individual? Ooh, question, is there training for non-tech savvy? I bet she's way more tech savvy than she does. Uh, to use Cassidy for someone that's non-tech savvy. Training. You know, this is something we, we prioritize aggressively at Cassidy. I think every AI product, every developer needs to think about this, is that this is a new paradigm shift. Using AI tools is generally new. If you're at the developer conference, you use ChatGPT. A lot of people have never used it. Yeah. And so when we think about how do we actually drive this dis disruption with Cassidy, we're focused on how do you build the resource library? How do you provide weekly webinars? How do you provide just a a aggressive amounts of a content so that people can learn as much as they need um, you know, when they're using a, an AI tool like Cassidy. Um, and I think it's something that every AI company, every person who's building AI should think about, uh, is how do you include the education in the product? Yeah, and that's really cool because there's moments even, and I've been doing AI forever, I'm like a dinosaur here, uh, but there's moments where certain AI clicks okay. yeah. and you're like, oh, I know what this is, yeah. right? And, and that's what you've got to do when you help people use AI as well, right? Exactly, it, it, you've got to get people to the aha moment, um, and that's, that's never changing. All right, looks like we have an in-person question, go ahead. Thank you for being here, we're so excited you're here at Microsoft Build. Curious about what the future of Cassidy looks like and what you're excited about coming up. So I didn't hear it very well, can you just one more time, a little bit louder. Sure, what do you see the future of Cassidy looking Ooh. like, where is it going to go, and Great what are question. you excited future about? Future of Cassidy, sorry. I mean, we are really focused on onboarding the next million users into AI, the people who have tried the technology, haven't had the aha moment. I think non-technical people need that additional help uh, that you know, us technical people might have you know, more of a, a ability to play with tools, understand them. And I think for Cassidy, we want to keep building an experience that makes it easy for completely non-technical people, people who don't know what an API is, to really build custom automations uh, something that they are excited about now that they've seen how powerful the technology is, but have really no idea how to start. And that's amazing because like I said, uh, this technology can be transformative, yeah. but we need to manage the hype as well so that we can get to solutions that really help people. Well, thank you so much for being with us, my friend. Seth, it was amazing being here. Thank you so much. And make sure to look, look up more about Justin at aka.ms, justin-feinberg, they're putting it below. Thank you so much and we'll see you in a little bit.